Bonnie's Insider is brought to you by Universal Primary Care, providing care to the entire family. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Bonnie's Insider brought to you by Universal Primary Care. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Tommy Valentine. When you take a look back at this semester, it's amazing to see the strides all our athletic teams here at St. Bonaventure have been able to make this fall, especially during these challenging times brought on by the coronavirus pandemic. Every program here has been able to host at least one inter-squad scrimmage, allowing for valuable simulations of real competition in the absence of live game action. And this week for Bonnie's Insider, we'll be highlighting the work being done by all our athletic teams to emulate those real game situations. That leads off our show in just a moment. After that, we'll be sitting down with our player profile guest, junior men's basketball star Oshun Oshuniyi. And the longest tenured coach here at SBU, head baseball coach Larry Studbrook, stops by the coach's corner. To close out our show, we'll give you a preview of the upcoming season for our women's basketball team. But first, as promised, we'll take it back to our athletic teams that were busy preparing for the 2021 season. They're practicing, but what are they practicing for? Okay, because the light at the tunnel is, isn't there yet, okay? They might see it in January and February, uh, but they want to see some results now. They had a 15-minute competition. Then they had a 3K competition. This Saturday is a 5K competition. And once they start seeing somebody beat them, now they want to race, have another race. The idea is to keep the competitive juices going. It's bragging rights and the kids like that, it's like a little bit of incentive so they can they can get fired up. I think just to keep it up, like since we don't have a season, he wants to keep us motivated and keep us on track. So that was pretty interesting. And um, it's actually gonna be a tradition now, the COVID classics. It's been harder this year than ever to stay motivated, but knowing that other teams across the country are doing the same thing, it makes it a bit easier to keep practicing, keep training. It's been really just relying on our teammates, um, keeping each other reliable and accountable and making sure that we keep training for the seasons that are coming ahead. I stay motivated through my friends, I think. Like, I live with three cross-country runners, so they really help me stay motivated, running together and encouraging each other, even though, like, we're not really able to kind of reach our full potential that we would with, like, a regular season without COVID. They're really encouraging, especially during these times, like, they don't really talk about, like, what could be happening. They just focus on, like, what we're able to do now, which is really nice. And also holding these scrimmages and making them fun, like, they brought donuts and that kind of stuff. Like, that's very motivating and helpful for them. I feel like we got everything done in a month of fall ball that we normally get done in a month of fall ball. Now, part of that was because we did return seven out of nine starters position-wise and virtually every pitcher. So there wasn't a ton of question marks or things to teach and instruct that people didn't know. Uh, but I do feel like in a month we got done what we needed to get done. I was very happy to be back out here. Just somewhat of normalcy, um, even though it wasn't necessarily completely the same and not being able to go up to like Niagara and play them like we've had in the past couple of years. Being able to be back on St. Bonaventure's campus and being able to play with my teammates again, and thinking that I'd never have that opportunity again was definitely something I'm gonna remember. Coming back like with, with the whole team, with all the guys, it, it felt good. I felt like a little kid almost. Finally back on the field just doing what I love. It, it, was, it was a good feeling, honestly. It was a good feeling. I had a lot of fun. You've got a little extra fire every day because it was almost taken from you and now you're back out there. You know that it's you can't take that time for granted anymore. If you're coming back, you're not coming back for no reason. You want to win games. You want to compete. Every day is a new opportunity to get better. I mean, I think it was definitely like a really tough adjustment for all of us, but it's definitely helped that we're at least allowed to be together and be in the same environment because you you have the support, you know, we're all going through the same thing together. Some competition, even though it's the same people every day, but it's definitely a good change of pace. It's definitely an adjustment. Um, our captains have been great leaders and our coaches have done like a great job like following like the safety protocols and still finding ways for us to work hard. You don't really need games to stay motivated. I think being in our team like setting and practices is motivating in itself. We're pushing each other very hard and we all want to get better. So having that same team goal mindset and just all working together has been going great. 
And just as those teams we highlighted begin transitioning into more off-season training and indoor work, the season is ramping up for our next player profile guest. Oshun Oshuni has all the intangibles of an elite big man at the collegiate level. But as is the case with our student athletes here at St. Bonaventure, Oshun is just as accomplished off the court. It was hard with the whole, when we got shut down, we were sent home, so it was kind of hard, but you know, Coach uh, Fish had us on Zoom every day, so I was doing that, and then the days that I wasn't doing that or wasn't in the workouts, I ran around the, like my uh, complex over my house as my younger brother, so me and him kind of ran on a block and did our own workouts outside. We're not used to not being able to be on campus and working out, so getting back, it was it was actually really fun and happy to be back. Chemistry with them, it, it's it's really good. I mean, we're always around each other on and off the court, so when you when you hang out off the court, it, it it takes it follows you to on the court so we're always hanging around each other and laughing have a good time so when we're playing together it's easy to know you know how to play together is that summer going into that season I had shoulder surgery so I was I wasn't really able to develop my game a lot I had a short shorter summer than a lot of guys so I wasn't able to do a lot of things and then first game you get hurt it's kind of like mentally it, it affects you a lot because you're thinking like you just got hurt freshman year and now you're hurt against sophomore year now you start getting mentally like am I injury prone am I going to stay injured but with my coaches, my teammates, my family. They all kind of stuck behind me and kept my head up and helped me get better and stay mentally strong and be able to fight through this and get better, and I got back. From the time I first picked up a basketball and played organized, I was blocking shots, so I kind of guess it was just, I just had it naturally. Kind of just timing, in a way. You can't really teach it. I just have like a knack for it, and like you just, it's a feeling. You can't really like teach someone how to block a shot. It's all timing and just having a feeling for it. It's, especially when I'm doing it in front of the student section, because they're all going crazy. It's, it gets me more riled up, and it, I actually play better when, I do, when I'm playing well on, on defense. And it'll be a nice thing to have my name as number one in the record, plus the for most blocks, but I'm more focused on, you know, trying to help a team, you know, win an A-10 championship and try to make a run in the uh, tournament. I'm going to have to watch out for my job the way Oshun's headed. You can catch him and the rest of the Bonnies in action in just over two weeks when they open up their schedule in Bubbleville at Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut on November 25th. Things are just getting started here on Bonnie's Insider. Coming up after the break, a Bonnie's coaching legend joins us for this week's Coach's Corner. You're going to want to hang around for that. You're watching Bonnie's Insider brought to you by UPC. Schultz is always at your service, ensuring your vehicle gets the maintenance it requires. Now, with modern, touchless options across the entire auto care experience. Speak with a service advisor on the phone or at one of our newly envisioned service centers. Pay invoices online or via mobile app. And drive home in confidence knowing Schultz only permits limited personnel access to your vehicle. Exceeding expectations is our mission. That's why the next generation of auto care is already here at Schultz. Away from campus? No problem. You can follow Go Bonnies wherever you are on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Keep up with all your favorite squads. And don't forget to use the hashtag unfurl. You light candles with strangers the day you arrive and extinguish them with lifelong friends the day you leave this place. A place that will transform your life inside and outside the classroom. A place where you'll learn to care about each other and about others you never imagined caring about. A place where people help you believe in yourself. For 160 years, St. Bonaventure University has helped good students become great people. Welcome back to Bonnie's Insider, brought to you by UPC. To put in perspective the length of head baseball coach Larry Sudbrook's career here at St. Bonaventure, we have to take you back to the year he arrived in Bonacountry, Country, 1985. That year, head men's basketball coach Mark Schmidt was in his senior year as a member of the Boston College basketball team. Our director of athletics, Tim Kenny, was still in high school, and legendary Bonnie's men's basketball alum Bob Lanier was only a year removed from his NBA playing career. Over 700 wins, 14 MLB draft picks, and three Atlantic 10 Coach of the Year award honors headlines a sterling resume for Sudbrook, making him one of the most accomplished and respected coaches in the A-10. In this week's Coach's Corner, sponsored by Energy Mark, we met with a man who has dedicated over three and a half decades of service to this university. Every two weeks when somebody just pays me to let me play coach baseball, and that's all I do, daylight to dark. I never wake up when the alarm goes off and go, crap, I gotta go to work today. I'm coming in to coach baseball. That's been a lifelong dream, and to be able to do it, this is my 36th year, is just unbelievable. When I got hired in the summer 
of 85, I would have been 29 years old. You know, you think at that point in time that you're going to come in, you're going to turn a program around, do some good things, and move on. Once I got here, you know, to me, the area itself, it was a great place to raise a family. Both of my sons uh, went to school here locally, went to St. Bonaventure, got their master's from St. Bonaventure. It just ended up being a perfect family fit once I was here. Yesterday, I'm coming home, I get a text from a number I don't recognize, and it is the son of one of my former players, and they are planning a 50th birthday party for him. You know, at the time, it immediately makes you think, too, that, well, if he's 50, you know, and I coached him, I've obviously been here quite a long time. And when I first started coaching, there were teams that would just wanted to slug. There were teams that wanted to bunt and hit and run and steal bases, play billy ball from the old days. There were teams that it was all about pitching and defense from the Earl Weaver days. And it stayed that way even at the major league level, I think, for quite a while. It's really been the last 10 to 15 years that uh, every decision is based on analytics, uh, very few people bunt anymore. They don't want to give up an out. Bringing your best pitchers in, in, not in the closing role, or so on and so on. It, probably the biggest change has been those last 10 years of analytics. Because I would consider myself more old school, and there's nothing more frustrating to me than having a runner at third base with one out, and you have a guy coming up that strikes out once every three times. I mean, I remember to this day, sitting at my living room, uh, watching my Indians, We've got a runner at third with one out. We're down a run late and hard hitting Mark Witten comes up who always strikes out and I holler at the TV and go, he's going to take a fastball. He's going to chase a curveball in the dirt for strike two. And then he's going to chase a third one. When he did it, I slammed my fist through the coffee table next to us, which had a glass center. And I broke the glass in the center of that coffee table that my wife still reminds me of to this day. I am not crazy. Uh, about the fact that people do not make contact, that it's all about throwing a hundred and hitting home runs and striking out now. I like home runs. I'm certainly thrilled to watch some guy throw a hundred, but the constant strikeouts, nobody can move a runner over, nobody can put a ball in play with a guy at third and one out to a guy like me that's uh, that's old school, very frustrating. Not being on a baseball field for six months during the summer, you absolutely appreciated it when you got out there in September. And I remember texting my two sons when we went down on the field for the first time full team is when I said, first time I've been on a baseball field full team since March. And I mean, obviously in my lifetime, that's never happened. You know, there's never been a reason that I wouldn't be on a baseball field. We would even text back and forth sometimes about, you know, hey, we were supposed to be home this weekend and it's beautiful. You know, it's like 70 degrees out. We could have played all three games versus whoever we were scheduled. And uh, you definitely, you marked the calendar in March, April, and May by where would I be? Who am I supposed to be playing right now? And it stinks that I'm not. Larry Subrick, one of the great minds in the game of baseball, and he has one of the great hitting duos in the Atlantic 10 Conference returning in Tyler Kelder and Brendan Stillman. We'll be looking to see the Bonnies improve on what was a hot start to the 2020 season. We've got one more segment coming up for you after the break. The SB women's basketball team is primed for a breakout year, and Bonnie's Insider has everything you need to know about head coach Jesse Fleming's team ahead of their November start date. Stick around, you're watching Bonnie's Insider brought to you by UPC. Western New York is known for energy innovation. Today, Energy Mark is leading the way for the next generation of renewable energy. At Energy Mark, we help power Western New York homes and businesses with low cost, locally produced energy, including renewables like solar and wind power. Energy Mark, the official energy supplier to the Buffalo Bills. Connect your account to Energy Mark at buylocalenergy.com. What's the best way to pick the right college? Use your head and make a practical choice based on cost and academics? Or follow your heart to a place that just feels right? At St. Bonaventure, you can do both. Here, you'll join a unique community that celebrates individuality, meet professors as passionate about people as they are about learning, 
and form lifelong connections without a lifetime of debt. Come see for yourself why St. Bonaventure isn't just a special place. It's a smart choice. Welcome back to Bonnie's Insider, brought to you by UPC. The team that will be taking the floor for head women's basketball coach Jesse Fleming in 2020 has been years in the making. Anchored by veterans like preseason all-conference selection Asian A. Johnson and senior forward Emily Calabrese, the Bonnies are complemented by an influx of new talent between their most recent recruiting class and an experienced group of transfers. Despite all the new faces, this group is gelling on and off the court as they look to make some noise in a competitive Atlantic 10 conference. Hello and welcome to the Riley Center on the campus of St. Bonaventure University for your 2020-2021 Atlantic 10 Women's Basketball Preview. Up first we sit down with head coach Jesse Fleming. Fleming enters his fifth season at the helm of the women's basketball program. He also returns eight players from last year's team led by seniors Emily Calabrese and Journey President. He also returns leading scorer from last season Asian A. Johnson who averaged 12.7 points per game. We, we've got an experienced team coming back, um, bringing back uh, six players that uh, that all contributed quite a bit. Got a lot of experience, a lot of minutes that have played a lot of A-10 games um, or a lot of college basketball games with uh, with some of the transfers that we've brought in. I, I like our depth a lot more. I think we can go eight or nine deep. I love our experience at the guard spot with Deja Francis and Asian A being three-year starters. Uh, putting uh, Tori Harris uh, in coming from James Madison to really shoot the ball for us. And then Emily's a four year starter for us. So really kind of ahead of the schedule this year of where we've been in the past and, and we're excited. We've got a solid core of returners and that really helps the newcomers. Um, it gets them up to speed a lot a lot faster. Ayana and, and, and Tori and Star, they've all played a lot of college basketball, know how things are supposed to be done. They know what a winning basketball team looks like. Really like that mix, you know, bringing in some experience right away. They're not really true freshmen. And then we've got a couple freshmen that we think um, can contribute right away that uh, that have really learned quickly, learned, they learn from their mistakes. Um, they're confident kids um, coming from winning programs and, and Morgan Gentile and Maddie Diskowski. Um, so I think it's a really, really nice mix of some experience, um, some experience from other places and some newcomers. Next step is just learn how to win now. I've been through it here before where you kind of accumulate talent, but there's a difference between having talent and talent that knows how to win. You know, our, our focus is just in everything we do right now of, of great, we've got some abilities and people that can shoot it, attack it, defend, rebound, all that stuff. But, but who are the winners in those winning times? moments uh, are we going to take advantage because we've got the experience you know we, we there, there's nothing to be said of with oh it's a youth thing or anything like they've they've cut their teeth in, in the rugged a10 um, and now it's now it's time to take that next step and I'm, and I'm hoping that we've been in that meat grinder long enough that that now we're ready to take that next step up next we're joined by senior forward Emily Calabrese Calabrese led the Bonnies in rebounding last year, pulling in an average of 6.1 rebounds per game. The New Jersey native has played in 90 games and has pulled down over 500 rebounds for her career. This year is really just like a focus on like leadership for me, being efficient around the rim and trying to be the most elite mid-range shooter in the A-10. But I just want to take my team to the next level. Defense is another focus for me. Being a smaller undersized post in our league um, is a big uh, improvement that I need to make this year. So I've been focusing a lot on that too. St. Bonaventure is a great program overall. And I feel like over the past couple of years we haven't really shown that. So just like moving forward, I just want to like start making a change and just return it to where we used to be. Last but not least, we hear from junior guard Asian A. Johnson. Johnson is yet to miss a start in her young career, starting all 60 games in two seasons with the Bonds. Johnson saw a big jump in production last season, boosting her scoring average by three points from 9.7 to 12.7 points per game. Just continue to work hard, continue to be in the gym, continue to support my teammates. Just being that type of player that can be that go-to player and also on the defensive end as well. Mentality has always been stuck with me and just being able to take over games and being that person who had my teammates. Like I can put my teammates on my back and be able to finish the game off because it's all about finishing. It's not about how we start, it's about how we finish. The team goals that we have is just to improve defensively. Uh, obviously everybody on the team can score the ball, but the main key is to stop teams from scoring the ball. So just improving our defensive. Uh, mindset. I think we were pretty solid. Uh, I would have to say we have a lot of experienced players coming back. Uh, me, Deja, Emily, Olivia Brown. We have a newcomer, uh, Tori Harris. We look pretty good, I'll say that. That's a wrap from St. Bonaventure for your Atlantic 10 women's basketball preview. Be on the lookout for the Bonnies when the season starts November 25th.
And we'd like to congratulate Asian A. Johnson on her preseason all-conference selection. You can check out the rest of the all-conference teams at GoBonnies.com, as well as the A-10 preseason poll that was dropped earlier today. That wraps up Bonnie's Insider for the week, but before we sign off, here's what's on tap for next week's show. Of course, when you're previewing the basketball season, you can't forget two of the longtime voices of SBU men's basketball, radio talent Gary Neese and beat writer J.P. Butler. We'll be talking Bonnie's Hoops with them next week. Coach's Corner features diving coach Stephanie Fleming and a trio of women's basketball stars turned coaches headline our alumni spotlight, Jess Jenkins, Priscilla Edwards, and Tierra Johnson. Thanks again to everyone who tuned in. Join us again next week when Bonnie's Insider returns. I'm Tommy Valentine. So long and thanks for watching. Bonnie's Insider has been brought to you by Universal Primary Care, providing care to the entire family.